anybody who has uh, purchased or anybody who has sent money on PayPal for the Pesach rhymes, uh, there are a number of people who have asked for the rhymes, but they've sent money, but you haven't sent me your email, so I could send you the, 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 the so please, those of you who have sent uh, the PayPal, have paid already, please send me your email so that I could then send you the, 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 the rhymes. I don't want your money. I mean, I do want your money, but I don't want your money without giving you the rhymes, so. Okay, here we go. So Parshas Mitzora, I don't think we're going to get past the first two psukim today. Page 620. Page 620. I don't think we can get past the first two psukim. There uh, is a medrash. Because Parsha's Mitzora is now a continuation of last week's Parsha. So I actually want to show you two points from last week's Parsha, which I forgot to mention. And I think, Eitan, you actually mentioned something last week, which is very interesting. First of all, I had a question. All of these laws, a whole parsha full of laws of, of, of Tsaras. If it's a this coloration or that coloration, there's a yellow hair, a black hair. If it spreads, it doesn't spread. Close them off, don't close them off. It's all these details. And I've had this question for many years. Every time I've learned parshas of Torah, I've, I've wondered about this. And I never saw an answer. Uh, and then that's Tazria. Then you got Parshas Mitzora, which is the purification process. And I always wondered, who are you talking to here? Who's the Torah talking to? The, Torah's talking to, the only one who has to know this is the Kohen. Only the Kohen. These are all these details. Why am I, what do I got to know the details? At the end of the day, if a person, by the way, I asked somebody your question about what happens if the guy gets it and it's, he's a chassan. So we had said he goes to the doctor. So I said, I said so somebody else said to me, no. He goes to the coin first. And then the coin takes a look and says, come back in seven days. We'll talk. Right? Now, maybe yeah, maybe no. I don't know which one. I don't know if it's a doctor or the coin. Whatever it is, I, I personally, I'd rather, be a do- I'd rather be a doctor. And the coin, if the coin looks at it and says, come back in seven days, I mean, you're not going to enjoy the next week anyway. You know, you know you're in trouble. And the doctor also, if the doctor says, well, it has nothing to do with me, you better talk to the coin. Either way, you're in trouble. But, but the, at the end of the day, it doesn't say, but I wonder, who, so why is the Torah going into all these details? I'm learning, and I'm, I, I, every year I'm reading the Rashi's, and Rashi's telling me, well, it's like this, it's like this, it spreads. Like that. What's it got to do with me? Here's the question. What's the answer? So that's a friend of mine, Tamar Chacham, Nachil for Nachil Friedman. He said to me, the Torah is telling you, think about this. Why am I learning this? Why do we have all these details? You're right, the details are for the coin. And you could be the biggest, tam- a bigger tamachacham than the coin. I may be more fluent, somebody could be more fluent in these halachas, yet he still has to go to a coin. So we said, number one, is humbling. But that doesn't tell me why, or, so, so he suggested, that the idea is that while you're learning all of this, start thinking about why we even have to have all this written. Why is it that the Torah even goes into this over here? The answer is because <laughs> either Lashon Hara or stinginess or haughtiness or all the other causes that it gives us a chance to think about why we even got this section in the Torah. So you got two good parshas where you got to do this. <laughs> you got to sit there thinking about, oh, discoloration, oh, spread, didn't spread, will spread, don't spread. The only person has, is, 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 is able to think about, you know, why, why do we even have to, why are we dealing with this at all? Okay, number one. Number two, this is, this is enchanting. Take a look at page 618. So there's a concept, there's a concept called ayin tova. You know, what, what's an ayin tova? What, a good eye, but what does it describe? What trait does it describe? Where we talk about he's always oh, got an ayin tova. You're you're a generous you're a gener- either you're a generous person or you look for the is is the cup half full or the cup half empty? Somebody once said if the cup is half empty, if the cup is half full, so take a smaller cup and pour it in, then the cup will be full, completely full. It's a life attitude. Cup is is full, so half full, so pour it into a smaller cup, then it's completely full. It's a good attitude. Somebody once said before you complain to Hashem that you didn't get what you do want. Be thankful that you don't get what you don't want. It's also an attitude. So is the cup half, it, 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 there are certain people who look at other people, you have the positive 
look at other people, that's an ayin tova. Or you have a, a negative, begrudging ayin uh, ra. Uh, uh, okay? So if you take a look at Pasuk uh, on page 618, look at Pasuk Nun Hei, Pasuk 55. It's a little past the middle of the page. And this is after the guy has washed his garment out. And then it says like this. Viroah kohen. See where that is? About 14, line bottle, 14 lines on the top. Viroah kohen acharehu kabesis anege. The kohen looks after the affliction has been washed. Vihine lo hafach nega es eno. The nega hasn't changed its appearance. But the word hafach es eno, eno also means what? What does it appear? What does the word eno mean? Ayin. Ayin. Eno means what? His eye. He hasn't changed his eye. That's the whole theme over here. The whole theme was for this guy to change from his. Why did he speak Lashon Hara? Because he's got this ayin ra'a. Change into an ayin toba. The ayin ra, if you're looking negative at people, that's why you're going to speak Lashon Hara, right? That's, that's the cause of Lashon Hara. So instead of having an ayin ra, have an ayin. Lo hafach in, in context, it means the garment, the appearance of the garment hasn't changed. When the garment, the Torah talks about saras on the garment. But, but it, 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 it alludes to the idea that the whole theme over here is change your eye. That's what my brother-in-law, Rav Avram Kohn, that's what he, his idea. The whole thing over here. But then I saw, then I saw a Ben Ishchai. Now you had brought up Eitan last week when I asked you, what does the word nega come from? You said oneg. And I said, yeah, well, nega and oneg, you know, it's the last thing when you got a nega is they can have an oneg. You know, oneg is delight. Nobody has an oneg. Nobody has a nega is delight. Right? The Ben Ishchai says, like you. Well, how do you like that? The Ben Ishchai says, if you take the take the look at the word nega, gentlemen, without drop the hay. Just look at the word nega. Nun gimel ayin. Now put that ayin in front of the word, in front of the nun gimel, and then what do you get? Ayin nun gimel, what do you get? Then you get oneg. Then you get oneg. Oneg means you delight in people. As opposed to nega means you're, you, you got an ayin ra. Says the Ben Ishchai, V'lo hafach es eno, you didn't change the ayin. The letter ayin. You didn't take that letter I and reverse it from the end of the word to the beginning of the word. And that's the whole goal, is that when you get a nega, reverse it so that instead of looking down at people, you're going to have, you're going to have, how do you like that? That's a Benish Chai. I saw the Benish Chai say, hey, that's eight times that's that. Right? You know, we're like, what, what's oneg got to do with nega? I mean, you got two things that could be more of a, a opposite is nega and oneg. And there it is that the Benish Chai says it alludes to the idea, lo hafach is eno, Eno refers to the letter ayin. Of course, it's called an ayin because it's got a little ayin in it. Right? It's got the, it comes a circle with the, with the dot. Lo hafach es eno, you didn't change from the end of the word to the beginning of the word. You go from, from nega to oneg, which means that, 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 that you could delight in people or you could be just the, totally afflicted by people. And the truth of the matter is that, that, that we lose, maybe, I don't know about you, I Human nature is we get, we're very critical of people until you need people. Then you realize how good people are. And when you need them, then you realize, well, they're a lot better than I thought they were. I heard Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Zelig Pliskin, uh, he, he wrote the book Guard Your Tongue in English and Love Thy Neighbor, a very wonderful man and wonderful books. And that was one of the first books in English, actually, was Love Your, Love Your Neighbor. And just a wonderful, wonderful person, a wonderful, wonderful book. So he was once giving a shear, and a dog walked into the room. Somehow a stray dog went into the room. What was everybody's reaction? A dog. Look at the doggy. A dog. What happens when a stray person walks into the room? Kind of give him a look. Like, I don't like the way he's walking. I don't like what he's wearing. I don't like that attitude. I don't like that body language. We're very critical when it comes to people, aren't we? Very critical. If you see a stray dog on the street, you know, the little puppy wandering around your you, know, you see a dog, you're like, oh, I hope he has a home. You know, the little kid in the car with my mommy, where's the dog? Don't worry, he's gonna go home soon, honey. Then when you see when you see a street person, what's your reaction? Ah, bomb, why don't you get a job like the rest of us? And they're very critical towards people. Very critical towards people. That's the difference between the Ayan Tov and the Ayan Ra. It's very, very wonderful insight. Huh? True. Attitude. What's that? Homeless begins on the street. 
What's that? California, the king. Uh, oh, it's the unbelievable. Place. California is unbelievable. California is unbelievable what you see on the streets there. I remember the first time I went to California, the first time I was ever in L.A., I thought, you know, Los Angeles, you know, movie stars, beautiful people, you know, it's all, it's all ooh, you know, L.A. I almost tripped on people on the sidewalk over there. It's, it's unbelievable. Then this last trip I was on, we drove into a different neighborhood. It was like, I, I was un, I, I, it was unbelievable. Uh, unbelievable the amount of street people. It's unbelievable. They, they're constantly dealing, trying to figure out how to, how to deal with it. I have a question. Yeah. You said that, that, that Syria is like, you should think about it, why this was written. You know, there are a lot of different other illnesses that are also caused by uh, psychological behavior. I don't know, like heart disease, like how... <coughs> why do we specifically mention that one that did not, is not uh, appeared anyway today? It, because... Uh, it, we have others. Uh, uh, good, because we know, yeah, I told you, the Chafetz Chaim says that in what, we, what happens nowadays, if uh, my daughter asked me also on Shabbos, what about nowadays through us? So the Chafetz Chaim says that the punishment for Lashon Hara nowadays is poverty. And Lashon Hara is, we're going to see now in Parshas Mitzvah, Lashon Hara is constantly with us. Other things, heart disease, you know, nowadays everything is stress. They always tell you, first thing is when they, when they give you advice, you know, first of all, reduce stress. Well, shkoyach, buddy. If I could reduce stress, I would. But, you know, if, if your salary is $10,000 a year and you need $15,000 a year, so yeah, yeah, I'd love it. So how should I reduce stress? Just rob a bank. Yeah, you got know, reduce stress. There's a life is there's stress in life. You got to learn how to handle stress and reduce stress. Of course, we got to reduce stress. If I'm waiting for the bus and I'm running late to the airport, or you know, we're to reduce stress. You know, what am I supposed to do? Hijack a car <laughs> to get to the airport? Reduce stress. We can't reduce stress. Most of the time, you can't reduce stress. You could learn how to handle stress. But these are all. And you're right, by the way. Every form of suffering, not just diseases. Not just illness. The Gemara says that if a person sees he's going through any sort of suffering, yifash pesh b'masav. Do some self-introspection. That's what it's for. It's there to make us think what needs to be improved. Without concluding, oh, no, I know why this is happening. Eh, maybe yes and maybe no. Because you need a prophet. I've said to you many times, you need a Navi to tell you exactly why it's happening. And we're not in the VM. But, but at least think. The guy's car got stolen. Why did my car get stolen? Mm. Last week, somebody wanted a ride, and I didn't give him a ride. Maybe I got to be more generous when I get my new car, let people, let people give people a ride. That might be the reason. It might not be the reason. But at least it got me thinking about it. At least that'll change in my life. Maybe that is the reason. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's because I've stolen things in the past. Don't know what it is, and I'm not a Navi. But at least it'll get me all... Forms of suffering are meant to do that. A person cannot conclude, a person cannot draw a conclusion. You know why. You need a Navi to know why, yeah. What's the connection between, um, he speaks Lashon and poverty? Like, what's the meter connection between that? What is the meter connection between that? Why is that? So it could be because the Gemara says there are four people who are considered as if they're dead. A childless person, a blind person, a poor person, and somebody who has tzaras. Okay, so it could be that this is the replacement for being for, for what do you call it? For instead of tzaras, so you get that, what do you call it? Okay. All right, now let's take a look at Parshas Mitzorah. V'dabr Hashem HaMoshe Leimor Zos Tia Toras HaMitzorah B'yom Toraso. This is the Torah of the Mitzorah. The Mitzorah is the one that has the tzaras on the day he becomes purified. Behuva El HaKohen. Okay. Oh. The first thing it means, if a guy is being brought to the Kohen, and we're going to see there's a bit of a, you know, the coin, he's brought to the Kohen, or the Kohen has to come to him. First of all, he can't be brought into the camp to the Kohen, because we don't, he doesn't know yet that he's been purified. And so we'll see later, the Kohen goes out to him. So which one is it? So there are commentaries that say that they actually meet at the border. That the coin goes up to the border and he goes to the border, but he's not allowed into the camp. He's allowed to the to the, to the point where is chutz l'machaneh, but he's right at the, at at the edge. Now, if it's already in this situation, so we understand we're talking about a person who's done tshuva, because the only way that he can be brought to the kohen is if it, the tzaras has disappeared. So apparently the tzaras disappears, and he says, "Hey, somebody, go, hey Ralph, go to go tell the kohen that I am uh, that I think I might be okay." Then the coin comes out to him. 
But that means that he's done tshuva because the tzaras doesn't go away. There are no creams. No cream you put on, some cortisone cream. Doesn't, that doesn't help. And then, so, so obviously, if, if he's in this situation, if he's in this situation, then, then it sounds like we're page uh, 620. <coughs> then he must have done some form of tshuva. So there's a Gemara of Odazar that says like this. <coughs> the Gemara says, Rebbe Alexandri, was one of the Amoroim, I'm not sure if it's the Amor or Tana. So he went out to the marketplace and said, Man boy echaye, man boy echaye, who wants to live? Who wants to live? Everybody gathered around him. Ooh, the potion of life. He's going to give us a, a, a what do you call it, a holistic medicine over here. You know, like what? So he's going to give us some secret how to live. So what did he say? He opened up a dilem. Mia Isha Chafetz Chaim, who wants to live? Which, by the way, why the Chafetz Chaim is called the Chafetz Chaim? Because he wrote a book on the laws of Lush and Hora. His name wasn't Chaim. And his name was, he said, Mia Isha Chafetz Chaim, who deserves life? Nitzor Lishon Chameira. Guard your tongue from evil. That's the secret. Everybody gather around. Rev. Alexandria is giving out the life elixir over here. He said, yeah. Mi ha'isha chafetz chaim. Nitzar l'shach v'eros ha'secha b'davim yilop, so speaking false. Sur b'rav ha'setov. That is, that's the, the secret of life. So the commentaries ask, I mean, you know, anybody who says Tehillim, anybody who says Tehillim would, would figure that out. I mean, it's a pusik in Tehillim. And if you say Tehillim once a, once a month and you go through Tehillim, you say, you say Tehillim, you'll, you'll see it. What, what, was the, what was the big chiddish over here? What was, the, what was the novelty over here? He said, hey, I got secret of life over here. Every guy says, Let's see, what was the big novelty? What was the big novelty? Good question, right? Reading it and doing it is different. Reading it and doing it is certainly different, but everybody reads it. Everybody reads it until him. What, 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 what do you call it? We say it in, on Shabbos. So what's the, what's the uh, every Shabbos, every week you say it. So what's, what's the novelty here? Because Chaim was able like, to, practice, to practice. Before you get the Chavz Chaim, no, no, I'm talking about Rabbi Alexandri and the Gemara. What was when he said to everybody, hey, I'll give you the secret of life. And everybody gathered around and he says this Pasuk to them. So what did he give them that they didn't already know? The answer is you could read something a million times. But all of a sudden, you get a shock treatment, and then you realize what this really means. I read it all, yeah. All of a sudden, Rabbi Alexandri comes out, I got the secret of life over it. Can you imagine? Lahavdo, Rav Chaim, not Lahavdo. Can you imagine? Rav Chaim Kinevsky's that's all. If he would say, why make an announcement? Rav Chaim Kinevsky's going to be giving away the secret of life, people. So we all go running out, and he says, Mia Yisha Chafetz Chaim. And he goes home. Oh, wow. I, I did, I, you know, I never registered. They're never registered. That's me. You know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, uh, um, in Sherlock Holmes. I, I, I've read Sherlock. Did you ever read her, Sherlock Holmes? Never read Sherlock Holmes. Did you guys ever yeah. read? Did you ever read it all? Have you read Sherlock Holmes? All. All Sherlock Holmes. I'll take a test anytime you want. I'll take you on, a, on Sherlock Holmes. I'm a Bucky in Sherlock Holmes. So, uh, so there's one time where, where he asks Watson how many steps there are. So how would I know? He, 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 you see, he said, why don't you know how many steps there are? You've seen it how many times? You've seen the steps going up. He says, you've seen it, but you haven't looked at it. And in, 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 in Tehillim, I read a passage of Tehillim. I've seen it a million times. I haven't looked at it. And it happens with people also. We see people, but we don't look at them. We see people all the time. You know when you look at people, you know when you find out who people are? Unfortunately, when a person has to go to the house of mourning. And then you hear about this guy. Do you know that he hasn't been Miss, Miss Minion in 40 years? I didn't know that. Do you know that he, that he was supporting 14 people that nobody knew about, 14 families? I, know, I didn't know that. We see the guy, but we never looked at the person. We see, that we, we see a lot of things we see. So Rebbe Alexander says, oh, who wants to live? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. I never realized that with the, the, power, the potency of that passage. And if Reb Chaim Kedyeski would say it, then, oh, oh, Reb Chaim Kedyeski said. You know how often it happens to be at home? My wife says, oh, I went to a shear. I heard it's an unbelievable idea. And she tells me the idea. I said, I've been saying that for years. <laughs> yeah, but you're you. You're just my husband, you know, what are you? you know? But this Rabbi Plony said, who's about a quarter of my age, he said, oh, it happens all the time. It happens to all, all, all teachers, it happens to all rabbis. Oh, but somebody else said, oh. So, so, by the way, I knew a guy, 
I know a kid. What was the Chafetz Chaim's name? Rabbi Yisrael Mayor Kagan. Kagan, and Kagan is a Kohen in, in your in your place, right? Because the G doesn't get pronounced. Yeah. It's really Kahan. It's like Kohen, Kahan. K Kagan spelled the Kagan is not is a mispronunciation. So I knew a kid. I knew a kid. The fact the kid was born, and the parents couldn't decide on the name. They were having trouble deciding the name, and it was they drank around. They still couldn't decide. It's the day of the bris already. So finally, the, you know, they're ready to do the bris. So the husband goes to the wife. She's behind the mechitza already because they're about they're doing the bris in the shul. The husband says, what should we call him? What should we call him? So she says, Chaim. He goes, what? He goes, Chaim. He goes, what? what, what? I can't, he didn't hear it. You know, like the Chafetz Chaim. So he goes, ah, Vikarei Shabbat Yisrael, Yisrael Mayer. <laughs> so they named him Yisrael Mayer. He couldn't hear his wife. <laughs> and so they named him Yisrael. He thought, she said, like the Chafetz Chaim. So he said, okay, Yisrael Mayer. And the wife was like, what? <laughs> And I heard another one, and another one, where they, they thought, this is, this is too good to, this is too good to pass up. The, 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 the husband said that they decided on the name David, which, by the way, is ranked as the finest name, and uh, what do you call it? So they decided the name David, and uh, so the wife is waiting, you know, and so they do the mila, and then they make the bracha, you know, where they name the child. And says, the creation of Israel, David Clonimus Ben Edward. So what? And the husband decided at the last minute to be creative, and he threw in the name Clonimus also. <laughs> David Clonimus. And not that Clonimus, you know, it's just that, like, I don't know any. <laughs> and so, so he, he, name, Clonimus? Yeah, Clonimus, Clonimus. They usually go as a, a Clonimus. There was a Rav Clonimus, I think, uh, or one of the Rishonim was Rav Clonimus, yeah. But I don't know anybody named Clonny Woods. Now I do. There's one kid running around who's, who's saying, I'm sure the mother doesn't use that name except on his documents. <laughs> In any event, that's the, uh, that's the way he caught. So, so now, th- th- that was the first. Now there's a medrash over here. The medrash says that Rib Shimon ben Gamaliel, by the way, anybody who has joined us, I've asked again, there are people who have paid for the Haggadah Rhymes, you've sent me money on PayPal, which I certainly appreciate, but you haven't sent me your email, so I have no way to send you the Haggadah Rhymes. Please email me if you have sent me money so that I could get the rhymes to you. The, uh, the Medrash says that Shem ben Gamliel once sent his servant to the marketplace, and he said, buy me something. Buy me something good. He sent them to Medrash, he said, buy me, he to the market, buy me something good. So he went out and he bought tongue. Tongue. You like tongue, yo? Do you like tongue? No, but I know it's considered. It's considered tongue. very tough, yeah. yeah. Tongue is extremely expensive. And if, it's one of those things like olives. It's either you love it or you hate it. That's one of those things. There's no, there's no in between over here. You're, you like tongue? No, you're a vegetarian. I forgot. Sorry. But, the, but it's Mosh? Good. I thought it was awesome. Yeah? I thought it was awesome. It's good. Yeah. Baruch? Yeah, you've eaten it. Okay, I, I can't get past the idea of what it is, but there are those who love it. No, no, they love it. It's, it's great. I've had it, but I, I just can't get past the idea that it's actually tongue. It's a, you know, give me some steak. You know, I, I get. So, so he sent him to the, to the marketplace. Bring some back something good. So he brought back tongue. So then the next day he said, "Okay, now bring something bad." So he brought back tongue. So he said. You know, I sent you something good. You brought back. You brought back tongue. I sent you something bad. I mean, why he sent it for something bad, I don't know. Maybe it was for the lesson. I'm not sure. But that's what the mentor says. And as I sent you for something good, you brought back tongue. I sent you something bad. You also brought back tongue. He said, "Kidetav leistav vine." When it's good, there's nothing better. And when it's bad, there's nothing worse. When the tongue is good, the tongue is nothing better than the tongue. You could change people's lives with your tongue. You could change people's lives both ways with your tongue. When it's good, there's nothing better. I give somebody a compliment, especially you build somebody up, you encourage people, you can change people's lives with it. And literally, with a statement, one thing that somebody says could change people's lives, and one negative thing could ruin a person, could ruin a person's day, could ruin, ruin his attitude. One thing that people say could change people, and there are countless examples of it. And that's why he said, Kedetav leistavide. When it's good, there's nothing better. And when it's bad, when it's bad, there's nothing worse. I said yesterday, there was a guy, yesterday I met a guy, guy Davin for the Yomad. He davened, he, davened, uh, he was a shlech for shachris. So later I saw him in the afternoon, I said to the guy, 
you know, wow, you know, you got a great voice. You know, maybe you should be the Don Freddy. I'm on a Rosh Hashanah, I'm Kippur. The guy lit up. The guy lit up. And there are other people that I've said negative things to who I didn't light, light them up. I extinguished them. You know, you could do it. It could go both directions. You could, you could, you could destroy people. You could destroy people with your mouth. And sometimes people are so inconsiderate what they say. They think a little bit. You know, a, a closed mouth catches no feet. You ever hear that expression? An open mouth catches feet. You've got your foot in your mouth. A closed mouth catches no feet. Right? Sometimes a person needs, you know, you know, think, think you could destroy people. That's what the Medrash is saying. There's so many examples of, of people who have, have said things that have changed people's lives with one word. I heard about a bacher who went into a, you have these yeshivas for guys who are struggling. Sometimes people call them off the derech. Uh, we call it taking a detour. It's the kind, he's on, he's, on the, he's on a detour road right now. He's not off the derech, he's, he's taking a slight detour for, so this bacher comes into one of these yeshivas for, for boys who are struggling with their Yiddishkeit. So he comes in, and there's a young rabbi there. And I, I know the guy, the guy told me the story himself. He comes in, there's a young rabbi there, and he says to the bacher, uh, he says to him down and asks him about his, his, his background. He says, yeah, he comes from an observant family, but now he doesn't, now he doesn't, what do you call it? He doesn't, uh, doesn't keep anything now. Then he says to the guy, you know, a few weeks ago I tried not smoking on Shabbos. Yeah, I went for a few hours, I went for about four or five hours after that, I said, out of heck with it, and I started smoking. So the rabbi says to him, listen, I want to make a deal with you. You come, you have enough of a background to realize that for smoking, for breaking Shabbos, there are consequences. I want to make a deal with you. I will gladly take the consequences of you breaking Shabbos if you'll also give me the reward for not having smoked for those four or five hours. So Bachar looks and goes, yo, what's up with that? I said, Bachar, talk. That's a full sentence in Bacharis. Yo, what's up with that? Right? In the old days, we used to say, could you please explain your intentions? Now it's, yo, what's up with that? So he says, I'll tell you what's up with that. For those few hours that you weren't smoking, it was difficult to not smoke. The Malachi Asharis, the celestial angels, were dancing and singing, and they say, look, there's a bucher over there who's not smoking on Shabbos. I will gladly take the punishment if you also give me the reward. The bucher became Shomer Shabbos because of that. One sentence. Bachar became Shomer Shabbos. Kidetav leis tav mine. When it's good, there's nothing better. When it's good, there's nothing better. And when it's bad, there's nothing worse. And people have said incredibly, so one of the most insensitive things, somebody, Chas Veshav, suffers a tragedy, people say to him, oh, that's not so bad, I heard somebody else has something worse. Oh, that's a real comfort, oh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's, my daughter, my first daughter, she got married. And uh, she's lucky I wasn't standing next to her when this happened. She got married. She's a kala on her wedding day. And, she said, and a woman came over to her, and she looked at her wedding gown. And she looked at the wedding gown, and she says, oh, you know, some of those flowers are yellow. She's wearing, apparently, there was a subtle yellow on the flowers in the wedding gown. She says, oh, you know, some of those flowers are yellow. So my daughter, to her everlasting credit, she just smiled. Like, she says, yeah, I happen to like yellow. If I was standing there, with a kala on her wedding day, you only say positive things even if it's not true. You're pointing out, and uh, 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 what you going to do, run home and change it to a new wedding gown? She doesn't have another one. Uh, what, what's the purpose of saying that? You understand, the, you understand what you could do? Then there was a guy, a guy there's a guy in, uh, in, uh, apparently in B'nai Brak. This young guy walks out of a shul, and some elderly rov stops him, and he says to him, are you, are you Shlomo Friedman? He goes, uh, yeah. He goes, I want to give you a Yasher Koch on your Shalom Bias work. He says, thank you very much. I think you got the wrong guy. I'm not involved in Shalom Bias work. He says, Yasher Koch on your Shalom Bias work. He says, I appreciate the cup. I'm really not involved. Yasher Koch. He says, w why? He says, listen, do you remember a couple of weeks ago, you were in a shul, about two weeks ago, and there was a young boy, about a 14-year-old boy, was sitting and learning. And you were watching him, then his father was sitting a row B2 behind him. He went up to his father and said, I want to tell you something, you got a remarkable son. His, his, his hasmoda, his learning, his focus is unbelievable for a 14-year-old boy. Do you remember that? He goes, yeah, I was impressed with that guy. He said, I want to tell you something. I am a professional marriage counselor. 
that man and his wife have been having marriage trouble. They haven't shown by his trouble. I've been working with them for six months on their marriage, and I haven't moved them one iota. You're the biggest problem in their marriage, by the way, is the husband has low self-esteem. Your compliment about his son picked him up so high, he walked out of that shul and bought, went to a, a florist, he bought his wife a bouquet of flowers, went and bought her a box of chocolate, and they've had Gan Eden in their house ever since because one, the one word that you said. What you did with one sentence, I haven't been able to do in six months of professional counseling. And I've seen it, I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in both directions. I've been on the receiving end, on the giving end, in both directions. In both directions. What's, what's the expression? When it's, when it's good, there's nothing better. When it's bad, there's nothing worse. My son used to use that expression when we're playing backgammon. He thought he was better than me. Maybe the whole thing is luck anyway. But every time he'd get a good spin, especially when he'd get a real good spin, like he'd get a real good spin, he'd say, Kid it tav les tav mine. <laughs> okay, now, there's one more medrash. This is an interesting medrash. There was a king, and this king got sick. And the doctors said to this king, he needs to drink milk from a lioness. You need a mother, a mother lion, a lioness. You need her milk in order to drink the milk, in order to get better. So he said, where am I going to ever, how am I ever going to get the, what do you call it, how am I going to get some lions? He told me, he signed one of his, uh, one of his trusted, uh, tr trusted servants, you're going to have to get me some lion milk. That's what the doctor said, I got to drink. So this guy said, there's a lion's den. How's he going to go over and take milk from a lioness? So the first day, he took, I think he took a number of sheep. The first day he sent one sheep in, and the lions ate the sheep. The next day he got a little closer and sent another sheep in. Each day he sent the sheep from a closer. The measure says he got closer, 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 and eventually he was able to get some milk from the mother lion. So on the way home, the eyes said, you know, we're the, uh, because of us, that this succeeded because we saw where she was. And the arms said, no, 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 it's because of us. It's we, we succeeded. It's because of us that we were able to get it. The legs said, no, it's because they are. the limbs of the body started arguing. Who is the best one here? The head said, it's because of me, because I'm in it. And the tongue said, no, no, it's all because of me. I'm stronger than the bunch of you. And they all thought, you, <laughs> you. You're just a, a little wobbly thing that's hidden in a, in a dark room over there. Well, well, what's it got to do with you? And the tongue said, oh, yeah, we'll see. And they come back to the king. And as soon as they get to the king, the guy says, here, I got you the dog's milk. And the king says, dog's milk? I said, lion's milk. Hang him! And so they take him out to execute him, and all the limbs are like, oh my goodness. The tongue says, now if I get you out of this, will you admit that I'm the, t I'm the best one? So they say, yeah, 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 anything, anything. So the king, so the tongue says back, okay, excellent, say just one thing. What's the difference, lion's milk and dog's milk? If you drink it and you get better, what's the difference? Number one. Number two, I was just kidding, it is lion's milk. He says, I don't know, the king drinks it and he gets better. He says, okay, let him off the hook. So the tongue says, okay, now do you admit that I'm the most powerful one? That's what the Medrash says. He says, it's all about the tongue. That's what the Medrash says. There's three, these Medrashim are brought here on this parsha. The Medrash brings this Medrash on this parsha. And it's all about the lesson of speech. Now, take a look, because we're going to go through this, the, what do you call it? Now, you got a strange thing here. A person who gets sick, you were talking about, uh, you were talking about, 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 about people getting sick. Person gets sick. One of the worst things, and I know that in medicine, your mood has a lot to do with your being cured. I just read a story about a doctor who went through a, a ward in the hospital, and he said to the uh, he said to the students, "This guy's going to live. This guy's going to die. This guy's going to live. This guy's going to die." And sure enough, they tracked the patients, and sure enough, these guys recovered and these guys died. And they said to the doctor, "What are you a prophet?" He said, "Not at all. This guy was very upbeat." And this guy was very depressed about his illness. You got to have the will to live carries you also. There's a guy named, uh, I think it was Norman Cousins. Did you ever hear of Norman Cousins? Norman Cousins apparently had cancer. And what he did was he bought a bunch of films, funny, humorous films. The Three Stooges and, you know, and, and all, the, all these, what do you call it? And he even wrote a book afterwards. And he sat all day watching films and laughing. And he got cured. And he wrote a book about how the laughter. Now, I, I don't know anything about medicine, 
But I always felt, you know, in the hospital, they're hesitant about giving you morphine and pain relievers. You know, they're worried you're going to get addicted. They never understood that. A guy's got, guy's got three weeks to live, though. We don't want you to get addicted. Yeah, hey, let, you know, let the guy go out with it. Let him go out happy. You know, what are you worried about? So, so, so I've always contended that the pain itself gets you down. And when you're down, you say your body, you're apparently somehow physiologically, the body does not fight as well when you're down. And I always just thought logically, yeah, take away the pain, even if the pain isn't to make a difference. They'll say to you, the pain doesn't make a difference. It does make a difference. It does make a difference. If it, in psychologically, it makes a difference in your mood. So here you have a guy who's been sitting out there alone. And with Saras, with all of that, how good could that be for healing? How good could that be for healing? I mean, what you really take the guy is take him to a carnival. Why is it? Give him some cotton candy. Why is he out? He's out there alone, and that's what causes him to heal. So you see that, again, this is a proof it's not a physiological cause. It's a spiritual cause. Because the cause is this guy has to go out there and do some soul searching. And yeah, you should be upset with yourself. You spoke Lashonari, you're haughty, whatever the cause is. So the irony is that the thing that doesn't normally work medically, here it goes and it works medically. How do you like that? That it works to, because it's not medical. That's why it works. Number one. Number two, the, uh, uh, what, look at the words of the Pasuk. Zos tia Torah samitzora. Now the word Torah in, in this context means the entire procedure. How does he uh, translate the arch, in the art school? This shall be the law of the mitzora because it's describing the procedure. But it doesn't say the, the din. It says the Torah of the mitzora. It means we want to get, if you want to stop, you know, they always talk about relapses. If a person's got an illness, we want to avoid a relapse. How do you avoid a relapse? Zos tia Torah ha mitzora biyom Torah The Torah is the way to avoid a relapse. That means you're going to use your speech. If you're going to use your, your capacity of speech, use it for Torah. Torah is the cure. Torah is the cure. Get involved in learning Torah. Torah will help a person to, to avoid speaking La Shahara. What number um, oh, uh, uh, number two number three, the the um, there's a uh, the, the the Kohen is going to take a look at him, so the guy comes to the Kohen. Now your heart is thumping, you're getting medical results now. You know, your person is getting medical tests. The worst thing about your life is being in that state of doubt, and now he's going to get the medical results, and the Kohen's going to look at him, and he's going to say one word. Either he's going to say. What's he going to say? One of two words. He's going to take a look at his, at, at, at the, at his arm or wherever it is, and he's going to say one of two words, which are? Or? Tahor. tahor. That's it. Let's make a whole speech over here. Mm, ta, I mean, imagine the coin stutters. They'll really put the guy, ta, 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 and the guy's going to come on, spit it out, man. What am I? <laughs> Tell me already. Uh, <laughs> Tahor. <laughs> One word changes his status. That's also a lesson for the Mitzvah. You see, again, the power of the word. One word from the Kohen is going to be the determining factor in who you are, where you are, where you're going to be for the next week. One word, and that's a, to drive home the lesson. Now, I'm going to tell you a cryptic statement the Gemara says. <coughs> the Gemara in Shabbos says, I'm quoting it, Leis de Anya Mikalba. There's none that are more poor than a dog. Vilais de atira mechazira. And no one is richer than a pig. No one is poorer than a dog, and no one is richer than a pig. What does that statement mean? There is none that is, what's that? Before, what's the play meaning? What's the play meaning? None is poorer than a dog, and none is richer than a pig. What's the plain meaning of the statement? Oh, that means that the food availability for dogs is that dog. It's not. It's not. You know, you gotta. Be, you gotta hope the owner gives you something to eat. I don't know what dogs out in the wild. I don't know what they eat. But you're in the house here, and you're, you're you're at his mercy. You're at his mercy. A chazer, this every eats everything and anything. He's constantly eating. So the plain meeting has to do with the food availability. The Vilna Gaon says that it's talking about, the Gemara says, 
a minority amount of people are involved in immorality. Talk about observant Jews. Talk about Torah Jews. Now talk about the world at large. The minority of Torah Jews, a minority, a minute amount of people are involved in immorality. The majority are involved in theft. How do you like that? The majority of from Jews are involved in theft. We don't even have to go that far. Leaving a light on in a room that you use, accidentally knocking something off a shelf in a supermarket, not, not paying for it. One way or another, so taking advantage of, you know, cutting corners here, there, could be tax evasion. And everybody's guilty of Lush and Harm. So the says, everybody? I mean, well, there's nobody else. So you're right, not everybody. Avak Lashon Har. Avak Lashon Har means, like, uh, uh, it's not absolute Lashon Har, but for example, if I know it's somebody you don't like, and I bring up a name, oh, by the way, then I saw Chaim today, and you say, ah, Chaim, that no good dick. So you're guilty of Lashon Har. I'm guilty of Avak Lashon Har, because I know you didn't like him, and bringing him up, I knew that you'd say something negative. Avak Lashon Har means the dust of Lashon Har. Says the Vilna Gaon, how many people, how many from Jews do you think eat pork? Mm-hmm. Oof. The most, we, even, we even talk about something that's treif chazer. When we want to describe how treif something, we say it's treif chazer. There's nothing that we have an aversion to as much as chazer. Yet, when it comes to Lashon Hara, you know, you slip one in here, you know, mm, say it fast, say it quietly, you know, and mm, and Says the Vilna Gaon, that's what the Gemara means. There's none as poor as the dog. A person who speaks Lashon the Gemara says, he deserves to be thrown to the dogs. A person who speaks Lashon Har, you should throw him like Kelev Tashlich and also he deserves to be thrown to the dogs. There's nothing as poor as the dog. That means the Avera of Lashon Hara is the one that's most neglected. And there's nobody as rich as the Chazer. It's unthink- unimaginable to eat Chazer for a Jew. That Avera everybody's worried about. That's a very wealthy one. That's rich. That everybody's focused on. And there's nothing as, nothing as poor as the dog. That's what the Vilna Gaon says the Gwar means. Right? The plain meaning, again, is referring to food. The Vilna Gaon says it alludes to the Avera. How many people are careful, really careful, not to speak Lashonar, really, really avoid Lashonar? Whereas when it comes to Chazer, unimaginable. Ah, Chazer, Chazer, the, 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 you know, Jews will do other, something else. Maybe even worse. They'll break Shabbos, but they won't eat Chazer. I got news for you. Breaking Shabbos is worse than eating Chazer. That's a symbol of non, non-Jewishness. And therefore we stay away from it. That's what the building goes says. Okay, TBC. <coughs> and again, anybody who's watching this, if you have paid, send me by PayPal for the Haggadah Rhymes. Please send me your email so that I can send them back to you because I don't have your email on the PayPal uh, payment. Okay. Thank you.